We all know StarCraft 2 can be a daunting experience for new players. You have to learn all the different units and buildings from each race, all the various macro mechanics, and then you actually have to go and micro an army to beat your opponent. The game sometimes doesn't do a good job conveying all the hidden mechanics, and so you might be missing out on crucial skills. This video will help you learn some useful tricks and explain some of these hidden systems. So let's just jump right on in. Tip number one. This has been in the game for many years now, but I think it's sort of unknown for a lot of newer players. If you hover your mouse over the top right hand corner, the supply, you can see how many units you have and the number of workers that you have. This is perfect for getting to three base saturation and knowing how many workers you have. It also importantly includes workers currently being built. Tip number two, injects actually stack. So it used to be that they would not stack, but sometimes during Legacy of the Void they made it so that queens can dump all of their energy into hatcheries and stack. This means that, if you're really smart, you can use all your pent up energy to keep injecting this hatchery so that it will not run out of lava for a long time, allowing your queens to go and defend other locations. Tip number three. While 16 out of 16 is the most efficient way to mine, if you have more workers than bases, it is okay to put up to 24 workers per base. Your 17th, 18th, 19th and 20th worker will provide a lot of mineral return, while the next four will have a lot more diminishing. Any after the number 24 will not return any. Unfortunately, this does not work for gas geysers. Tip number four, mineral walk. Now this one is a classic. If you can't get through an opponent's unit with a worker, it's important that you go past it and click on a mineral patch. This will make sure it avoids all collision. And as we see here, it allows us to get through the zealot on the hold position. This is an important skill to develop so that our probes in the early game and our workers in general don't die. Tip number five. If your probe is trapped in your base because you fully walled off, it's possible to sneak it out through the use of buildings. You wanna get your probe really close to the exit and then line it up with a spot where on the build grid, there's no space remaining. This way you can get through full walls. So I'm gonna line up next to the Stargate really, really close, click on the other side. There's no space, so when I build a building behind it, like a pylon or even a gateway, it's gonna push me forward. Tip number six. If we look at these pylons, one of them is green and one of them is blue. We call the green one a super pylon. And in this section, you're going to be able to warp in quicker. So when you warp in the blue, the stalker will take a lot longer than warping in the green. You can create super pylons by having a nexus in the vicinity or a warp gate. Not a gateway, but a warp gate. So this is very important when we look at taking a new expansion. When you warp in, it's gonna have a slow warp in, but as soon as the pylon gets converted to a super warp in, it's not gonna do the full 11 seconds, it'll do the quick warp in. This is why out on the map, you often see a gateway being built next to the pylon, but importantly, it doesn't turn until it becomes a warp gate. And of course, warp prisms are super pylons always. Tip number seven. If we look at the Nexus, there is this radius around it, and we want to always be building our shield batteries within this radius. That way, they will spawn with 100 energy, and also you'll be able to use shield battery overcharge. So when we build it at our natural, it has 50 energy because there's no Nexus. Unlike the Super Pylon though, when we build the Nexus, it does not go up to 100, but any future shield batteries that we build will spawn with 100 energy. Tip number eight. The F2 key can be problematic. If you have defensive units positioned across the map, you don't wanna be bringing them in all the time. But a great use of it is for finding important units like spellcasters and oracles. So I press F2, I click on the unit on the grid, I hotkey it so I can go towards it, and that way I found my lost war prism or my lost oracle. This is a key and vital skill that you can use to better control your important army. Tip. Number nine, all Terran units don't naturally regenerate. This is why to heal bio units, you need to use a medevac or repair mech units. Zealots will recharge their shields once damaged after 10 seconds being out of combat. Their health does not regenerate. And in terms of roaches and zerg units, these are constantly regenerating all the time, even when in combat, but at a much slower rate than the shield regeneration. And finally, tip number 10. You can always tell if a building is researching or building units. I'll show you the Protoss ones. So for all the production buildings, we can see that they're clearly producing units, but the Stargate is the only building in the game 
where you can actually see what is being physically constructed. So this is a great way to tell when scouting. But you can also tell when upgrades are being researched in every other building, like at the Twilight Council, Forge, Templar Archives. Oftentimes they can be a bit subtle, the Twilight Council is pretty difficult, same with the Cybernetics Core. The others are much more simple, they start flashing, parts start moving, very simple. The Cyber Core starts whirling uh, a bit faster, and the Twilight Council, its blinking lights move quicker. I'll show you this in just a second up close, because I think this is the trickiest one to know. This also works with Nexuses as well, you can always tell if a Mothership is building or workers. Of course, this doesn't only work for Protoss, it also works for Terran and Zerg buildings. Hopefully you can start applying these tips into your games, or it might just help you understand pro-level games more. If you want more help getting into StarCraft 2, you can do so by watching this video next.